On this video, we're going to be featuring this tree here. Now, this is called the grass tree. There's 28 known species within Australia. For me, in this local region here, it's up there in the top three survival plants. The entire plant is useful from food, weapons, basketry, shelter. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to collect resin from the trunk, and we're going to be doing some stone technology. Now what I like about the grass tree guys is, especially in summer, walking through the bush, you want to get a bit of moisture in your mouth, a little bit of a sugar carb hit, you just pull the, the young shoots out and chew on the end. Mm. Mm. First couple of centimetres is really nice and sweet, and you get plenty of moisture in your mouth. Mm. Mm. That's really good. I tell you guys, grass trees have adapted magnificently to bushfires, so what they do is they don't drop their dead leaves. So what this does is it acts like a big band of thermal insulation when the fires come through. So when we get our uh, resin, the first thing you want to do guys is clear the area of the trunk from the dead branches. You can generally just pull them down like this. I'm just going to get a bit of resin from this area here. Now, traditionally, this would have done been done with stone technology obviously okay I've got a hand axe here but the first thing you want to do is just scrape the charcoal off the trunk okay and you'll see that uh, a red layer starts appearing try to get as much charcoal off the trunk uh, before scraping the resin uh, the fascinating thing with grass tree trunks is actually probably about 60% of it is resinous material it's awesome I'm going to switch over from uh, stone technology to <laughs> more modern conveniences to collect my resin for our uh, project. Um, so the way I do it is I just uh, scrape down the trunk like that and you'll see that the resin drops down. Now I'm going to have to clear the area to collect my resin. I've conveniently brought a piece of kangaroo skin that the resin can fall onto. Just place that around to make sure we don't lose any material. Give a little bit more of the dead leaves. And I just, um, just go down the trunk with my saw. Okay, this, this doesn't harm the tr trunk by the way guys. Um, you do get to a certain area where you'll see the resin stop, so you just stop cutting. And you only need to take a few mils off the outside anyway. This is what we're going to make today guys, it's called a Lailira blade. Now these were traditionally made up in the Northern Territory. Now there has been evidence that they have uh, were also manufactured in Queensland, in Western Queensland. Okay, and now this is very basic uh, stone technology. Uh, we use a core, or we have a core of stone. We have a hammer stone and one hit and the flake comes off. And traditionally it would have a flat side or the ventral side. And then the side with the ridges is called the dorsal side. They would not touch up the edges, okay, it was, it was uh, as simple as could be and they did actually halved the handle end or the bulb of percussion end with resin. Traditionally it was spin effects. We don't have that down here so I'm going to use uh, Xanthoria. Okay guys, this is one of the cores I've prepped uh, before walking in. I've got a ridge down here so let's see how we go with that one. And we got one here too. So let's go. Oh, look at that beauty. <laughs> that is a beautiful long blade. That is awesome. Uh, unfortunately, I am going to have to touch up 
I think just a little bit on the tip here just to make it look pretty but that is a beautiful example of the Lelira blade. So we've got the, the flat ventral side, the side with the ridge, the dorsal side and the bulb of percussion up here and that's where we're going to put the resin. That is a beautiful blade. I'll just uh, quickly touch up just the tip here. Make it pretty. Yep, that's better. What a beauty. That is a beauty. So when you're using the Xantha rear resin, just make sure you grind it up nice and fine. I like to grind it up very, very, very fine, as fine as I can get it actually. You just end up with a really nice finish on whatever piece you're making. I'm going to be using a propane torch just to speed things up, make it a little bit more convenient. Okay, traditionally, obviously a fire would have been used. So the first thing we want to do with our piece is heat, heat the end up, heat the bulb of percussion up of the Lelira blade. And then we can dip it into the powder. Slowly, slowly, the fine powder will start sticking to the end. And then we can build it up. Into a nice, comfortable handle. So you can see um, with the torch, it's, it's quite quick actually. Now some traditional methods, um, they would make a big, like a big blob of resin next to the fire and put that on. But I find that when I use this really, really fine powder, it gives me nice control over finish of the piece and you can even do this just to decorate primitive objects I use it quite a lot now as a decorative feature you can see the globules of the uh, resin starting to melt Now, when you build up a couple of millimetres like we got here, you need to just let it cool down a little bit and then start pressing it into sh the shape. It's quite malleable, but it does cool down pretty quickly. So you've got to be quick. This is some nice quality resin we've got here. You can see there's a fair bit of resin built up now. What I'm going to do is, I've got to be careful with that. But I'll bring it close up to this camera and show you what we're doing. So I'm just melting it, making it malleable, and then shaping the handle. Okay, now I'll just hit this with a bit more heat because you can see the, the resin is not burnt on the outside. There we go. This camera might pick it up a bit better. You can see we got some beautiful quality resin in there. That's what I mean about getting it nice and fine. It just melts beautifully. You can see the burgundy colour amongst the charcoal. This is beautiful stuff.
There you go. That is really very nice. I'll just build up a little bit more. A little bit more. A nice comfortable handle. Now in early times, resin was actually used for quite a lot of things. Um, they started using it straight away medicinally, making tinctures and tonics. Um, it was also used in furniture manufacturing for a varnish. And this, and I'll probably end up showing you on future videos, this makes a really, really brilliant varnish. It really does. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, deep burgundy colour. A lot of my um, museum reproductions and tools I actually varnish with this. Santharia resin. It's such a useful plant. The entire plant is such an awesome plant. It's an amazing plant. So many uses. You want to press your resin nice and tight. Okay, because if you leave it loose, it becomes a little bit brittle. And a pro tip here, guys, is you do not need to add extra charcoal to grass tree resin. We're not making pine pitch. Charcoal is a hardener and, and makes it more brittle, in my opinion. You want pure resin. You'll end up with a little bit of fibre anyway, which turns to charcoal. So there's plenty here. You don't need to add more. Now this is one <laughs> nice looking Lailira blade. This is beautiful. Have a look at this. Switch that off. Uh, look at that. That is awesome. One Lailira blade. 